The New York Times bestseller list is widely considered the preeminent list of best-selling books in the United States. Published weekly in the New York Times Book Review, the bestseller list has been published in the Times since October 12, 1931. In recent years it has evolved into multiple lists in different categories, broken down by fiction and non-fiction, hardcover, paperback, and electronic, and different genres. History Although the first best-seller list in America was published in 1895, in The Bookman, a best-seller list was not published in The New York Times until 36 years later with little fanfare on October 12, 1931. It consisted of five fiction and four non-fiction books for New York City only. The following month the list was expanded to eight cities, with a separate list published for each city. By the early 1940s, 14 city lists were included. A national list was created on April 9, 1942, in the New York Times Book Review Sundays as a supplement to the regular city lists Monday edition. The national list was ranked according to how many times the book appeared in the city lists. A few years later the city lists were eliminated entirely, leaving only the national ranking list, which was compiled according to reports from leading booksellers in 22 cities. This methodology of ranking by bookseller sales figures remains to this day, although the exact data compilation process is a trade secret and has evolved over time. By the 1950s, the Times's list had become the leading bestseller list for book professionals to monitor, along with that of Publishers Weekly. In the 1960s and 70s, mall based chain bookstores B. Dalton, Crown Books, and Walden Books came to the forefront with a business model of selling newly published bestsellers with mass market appeal. They used the best-selling status of titles to market the books and not just as a measure of sales, thus placing increased emphasis on the New York Times list for book readers and booksellers. Composition The list is compiled by the editors of the News Surveys Department, not by the New York Times Book Review Department, where it is published. It is based on weekly sales reports obtained from selected samples of independent and chain bookstores and wholesalers throughout the United States. The sales figures are widely believed to represent books that have actually been sold at retail, rather than wholesale, as the Times surveys booksellers in an attempt to better reflect what is purchased by individual buyers. Some books are flagged with a dagger indicating that a significant number of bulk orders had been received by retail bookstores. The New York Times reported in 2013 that we generally do not track the sales of classic literature. And thus, for example, new translations of Dante's Inferno would not be found on the bestseller list. The exact method for compiling the data obtained from the booksellers is classified as a trade secret. Book review staff editor Gregory Cowles explained the method is a secret both to protect our product and to make sure people can't try to rig the system. Even in the book review itself, we don't know the news surveys department's precise methods. In 1992, the survey encompassed over 3,000 bookstores as well as representative wholesalers with more than 28,000 other retail outlets, including variety stores and supermarkets. By 2004, the number was 4,000 bookstores as well as an unstated number of wholesalers. Data is adjusted to give more weight to independent bookstores, which are underrepresented in the sample. The lists are divided among fiction and nonfiction, print and ebook, paperback and hardcover. Each list contains 15 to 20 titles. The lists have been subdivided several times. Advice, How To, and Miscellaneous debuted as a list of five on January 1, 1984. It was created because advice bestsellers were sometimes crowding the general nonfiction list. Its inaugural number one bestseller, The Body Principle by Victoria Principle, had been number 10 and number 12 on the nonfiction lists for the two preceding weeks. In July 2000, the Children's Best Sellers was created after the Harry Potter series had stayed in the top spots on the fiction list for an extended period of time. The Children's List was printed monthly until February 13, 2011, when it was changed to once an issue weekly. In September 2007, the paperback fiction list was divided into trade and mass market 
sections, in order to give more visibility to the trade paperbacks that were more often reviewed by the newspaper itself. In November 2010, The New York Times announced it would be tracking e-book bestseller lists in fiction and nonfiction starting in early 2011. Royalty Share, a San Diego-based company that tracks data and aggregates sales information for publishers, will provide e -book data. The two new e-book lists were first published with the February 13, 2011, issue. The first tracks combined print and e-book sales, the second tracks e-book sales only. Both lists are further sub-divided into fiction and non-fiction. In addition a third new list was published on the web only, which tracks combined print sales hardcover and paperback in fiction and nonfiction. In December 16, 2012, the children's chapter books list was divided into two new lists, middle grade ages 8 to 12 and young adult age 12 to 18, both which include sales across all platforms hard, paper and ebook. Criticisms. <coughs> <coughs> The list has been criticized by authors, publishers, book industry executives, and others for not providing an accurate accounting of true bestseller status. These criticisms have been ongoing ever since the list originated. A book industry report in the 1940s found that bestseller lists were a poor indicator of sales, since they were based on misleading data and were only measuring fast sales see fast sale criticism below. A 2004 report quoted a senior book marketing executive who said the rankings were smoke and mirrors, while a report in book history found that many professionals in the book industry scoffed at the notion that the lists are accurate. Specific criticisms include fast sales. A book that never makes the list can actually outsell books on the bestseller list. This is because the bestseller list reflects sales in a given week, not total sales. Thus, one book may sell heavily in a given week, making the list, while another may sell at a slower pace, never making the list, but selling more copies over time. Double counting. By including wholesalers in the polls along with retail bookstores, books may be double counted. Wholesalers report how much they sell to retailers, and retailers report how much they sell to customers, thus there can be overlap with the same reported book being sold twice within a given time frame. In addition, retailers may return books to wholesalers months later if they never sell, thus resulting in a sale being reported that never came to fruition. For example, mass market paperbacks can see as high as 40% return rates from the retailer back to the wholesaler. Manipulation by authors and publishers. Author Jacqueline Suzanne Valley of the Dolls attempted to butter up Times reporting booksellers and personally bought large quantities of her own book. Author Wayne Dyer Your Erroneous Zones purchased thousands of copies of his own book. Al Newharth Confessions of an SOB, former head of Gannett Company, had his Gannett Foundation buy 2,000 copies of his own autobiography. In 1995, authors Michael Tracy and Fred Wiersema spent $200,000 to buy 10,000 copies of The Discipline of Market Leaders from dozens of bookstores. Although they denied any wrongdoing, the book spent 15 weeks on the list. As a result of this scandal the Times began placing a dagger symbol next to any title for which bookstores reported bulk orders. However daggers do not always appear, for example Tony Shea's Delivering Happiness was known to have been manipulated with bulk orders but didn't have a dagger. Companies that contract with authors to manipulate the bestseller list through bestseller campaigns include result source. Manipulation by retailers and wholesalers. It happens with regularity that wholesalers and retailers deliberately or inadvertently manipulate the sales data they report to the Times. Since being on the Times bestseller list increases the sales of a book, bookstores and wholesalers may report a book as a bestseller before it actually is one, in order that it might later become a legitimate bestseller through increased sales due to its inclusion on the bestseller list, leading to the bestseller list becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy for the booksellers. Leading data collection. The Times provides booksellers with a form containing a list of books it believes might be bestsellers, to check off, with an alternative, other, column to fill in manually. It's been criticized as a leading technique to create a bestseller list based on books The Times thinks might be included. One bookseller compared it to a voting card in which two options for president are provided. Bill Clinton and other. Self-fulfilling. 
Once a book makes it onto the list it is heavily marketed as a bestseller. Purchased by readers who seek out best sellers, given preferential treatment by retailers, online and offline, who create special best seller categories including special in store placement and price discounts, and is carried by retailers that generally don't carry other books, e.g., supermarkets. Thus, the list can become self fulfilling in determining which books have high sales and remain on the list. Conflicts of interest Due to high financial impact of making the list, since the 1970s publishers have created escalator clauses for major authors stipulating that if a book makes the list the author will receive extra money, based on where it ranks and for how long. Authors may also be able to charge higher speaking fees for the status of being a bestseller. As Book History said, with so much at stake then, it is no wonder that enormous marketing effort goes into getting a book access to this major marketing tool. Topic controversies In 1983, author William Peter Blatty sued The New York Times for $6 million, claiming that his latest book, Legion, filmed as The Exorcist III, had not been included in the list due to either negligence or intentional falsehood, saying it should have been included due to high sales. The Times countered that the list was not mathematically objective but rather was editorial content and thus protected under the Constitution as free speech. Blatty appealed it to the Supreme Court, which declined to hear the case. Thus, the lower court ruling stood that the list is editorial content, not objective factual content, so the Times had the right to exclude books from the list. In 1995, Michael Tracy and Fred Wiersema, the authors of a book called The Discipline of Market Leaders, colluded to manipulate their book onto the bestseller charts. The authors allegedly purchased over 10,000 copies of their own book in small and strategically placed orders at bookstores whose sales are reported to BookScan. Because of the benefits of making the New York Times bestseller list speaking engagements, more book deals, and consulting the authors felt that buying their own work was an investment that would pay for itself. The book climbed to number four on the list where it sat for 15 weeks, it also peaked at number one on the Businessweek bestseller list. Since such lists hold the power of cumulative advantage, chart success often begets more chart success. Although such efforts are not illegal, publishers consider them unethical. In 1999, Amazon.com announced a 50% decrease in price for books on the bestseller list to beat its competition, Barnes & Noble. After a legal dispute between Amazon and the New York Times, Amazon was permitted to keep using the list on condition that it displayed it in alphabetical rather than numerical order. By 2010, this was no longer the case. Amazon now displays the bestseller list in order of best-selling titles first. In 2013, Forbes published a story titled Here's How You Buy Your Way Onto the New York Times Bestsellers List. The article discusses how ResultSource, a San Diego-based marketing consultancy, specializes in ensuring books make a bestseller list, even guaranteeing a number one spot for those willing to pay enough. The New York Times was informed of this practice and responded, The New York Times comprehensively tracks and tabulates the weekly unit sales of all titles reported by book retailers as their general interest bestsellers. We will not comment beyond our methodology on the other questions. The New York Times did not alert its readers to this, unlike the Wall Street Journal, which admitted that books had landed on its bestseller list due to result sources campaign. Soren Kaplan, the source who admitted he had paid result source to land his book, Leapfrogging, on the Wall Street Journal's bestseller list, revealed the methodology on his blog. He posted, If I could obtain bulk orders before Leapfrogging was released, result source would purchase the books on my behalf using their tried and true formula. 3,000 books sold would get me on the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. 11,000 would secure a spot on the biggest prize of them all, the New York Times list. In 2014, the Los Angeles Times published a story titled, Can Bestseller Lists Be Bought? It describes how author and pastor Mark Driscoll contracted the company ResultSource to place his book Real Marriage 2012 on the New York Times bestseller list for a $200,000 fee. The contract was for ResultSource to conduct a bestseller campaign for your book, Real Marriage, on the week of January 2, 2012. The bestseller campaign is intended to place Real Marriage on the New York Times bestseller list for the advice how to list. To achieve this, the contract stated that RSI will be purchasing at least 11,000 total orders in one week. Quote, this took place, and the book successfully reached number one on the hardcover advice bestseller list on January 22, 2014. In July 2015, Ted Cruz's book A Time for Truth was excluded from the list because the 
Overwhelming preponderance of evidence was that sales of Cruz's book were limited to strategic bulk purchases to artificially increase sales and entry onto the list. In response, Cruz called the Times a liar and demanded an apology. The Times said it stood by its statement and evidence of manipulation. In August 2017, a young adult fiction book, Handbook for Mortals by previously unpublished author Lonnie Sarum was removed from the list, where it was in initially in the number one spot. According to a statement issued by the Times, after investigating the inconsistencies in the most recent reporting cycle, we decided that the sales for Handbook for Mortals did not meet our criteria for inclusion. We've issued an updated young adult hardcover list for September 3, 2017 which does not include that title. It was uncovered, by author Phil Stamper, that there had been unusual bulk ordering patterns which inflated the number of sales. The book is published by Geek Nation, an entertainment website based in Los Angeles. The book was originally written as a script, and was rewritten as a novel in an attempt to launch a film franchise. In August 2017, conservative publisher Regnery Publishing said it would no longer allow its writers to claim New York Times best selling authors due to its belief the Times favors liberal books on the list. The Times responded the political views of authors have no bearing on the list and noted conservative authors routinely rank highly on the list. The Associated Press noted the Times as a frequent target of conservatives and Republicans. The Washington Post called Regenery's ban a stunt designed to increase sales. What better way to sell a book to a conservative audience than to promote the idea that the New York Times doesn't like it? The Post compared best seller lists from Publishers Weekly looking for bias and could find none. In February 2018, Toronto Star published a story by books editor Deborah Dundas who found that the best selling book 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson, who topped Publishers Weekly chart list, did not even chart on the New York Times best sellers list, without reliable answers from NYT. The NYT stated it was not counted because it was published by a Canadian company. According to Random House Canada, the book was handled properly for the U.S. market. American conservative commentator Dennis Prager wrote an article for National Review titled, The Times Best Seller List, Another Reason Americans Don't Trust the Media, in which contends that the issue with Peterson's book, as well as the rational Bible, Exodus, is their conservative context and the lack of inclusion as the American mainstream media's manipulation. NYT denied any bias. Topic. Studies A Stanford Business School analysis suggests that the majority of book buyers seem to use the Times list as a signal of what's worth reading. The study concluded that lesser-known writers get the biggest benefit from being on the list, while perennial best-selling authors, such as John Grisham or Danielle Steele, see no benefit of additional sales. See also Bestseller Lists of the New York Times Fiction Best Sellers Lists of the New York Times Nonfiction Best Sellers Lists of the New York Times Manga Best Sellers Oprah's Book Club Publishers Weekly Lists of Best-Selling Novels in the United States <laughs>